comes from and you know all of that what can you share with us maybe from an advice perspective or tips as to how to maneuver through this time what are you telling people through the company boy that's a great question it's a big question yeah. and um you're you're my facebook friend so i'm sure you have a really good idea of where i come down with this and, and yeah. i'm not bashful about what, what my views are that's for sure um you know here's where i come down um i, I think that that we really need to um we need to take our health needs to be a priority okay yeah. it's the most important thing we have okay and, and so we really need to make it a, a priority now if you haven't done that already and now we've got this COVID situation you're in a little bit different situation yeah. because um you know because of the things i've done up until now the things that you've done up until now um you know whether people believe that or, this or not that will have a bearing on whether we how well we do if we do get covered okay mm -hmm. it just will it, it, your level of health has a has a has a lot to do with it yeah um you know it's a novel virus and some people have the idea that well there's no immunity to it well if there's no immunity to it why do most people recover fine from it? and then mm -hmm. some people don't you know um it's because some people do have uh, some degree of immunity to it um their immune systems are are much stronger much more robust than others yeah um you know and i think that i think there's a lesson here for everyone and that is that we need to really make health a priority and i think it's an opportunity um where there is a heightened sense of health that everyone has you know all of a sudden people who i've never seen give any thought to health all of a sudden they're talking about COVID this and COVID that and i'm like hey at least they're talking about health for the first time in their life right yeah. so i think that's a great thing um, but I think we should take this opportunity and understand that we, we need to be doing things every single day to make sure that we're always keeping ourselves in the best health for when something like this comes up. Because things like this are always going to come. Viruses, their devices are, they've always been there. They always will be. They're all over. Yeah. Now, to speak to COVID directly, um, in my opinion, um, and I follow this really closely. I mean, I've been watching this very closely from the start and I'm a data person. I look at data, I look yeah. at spreadsheets all day long. I look at the most <laughs> minute little numbers and, and see if we can affect this little bit. That way it, it, it affects, you know, this and it affects this and then there's a chain reaction. Yeah. Um, but if you look at the numbers, uh, it, it, it is clearly a deadly disease. Uh, in my estimation, it is worse than a bad flu. It is not Ebola. It is not the Spanish flu, mm -hmm. but it is something that you definitely do not want to go out of your way to get. Okay. Um, especially if you're, you know, if you're immune compromised, if you have any kind of uh, underlying conditions, you want to do everything you can to stay away from this. Now, if you're younger and you're healthy, um, you know, my son, Liam, you were talking about how, you know, you make changes and it affects things. Yeah. Well, my son, the, the, what, what he grew up eating and was exposed to as far as health was vastly different because of what I went through right. had I not gone through that, right? And he's perfectly healthy. I mean, great health. And when this whole thing broke out, uh, one week before the lockdown here in North Carolina happened, he had to fly to Atlanta and back uh, for a business trip. Mm -hmm. And we didn't think anything of it. We did not, we were not scared about it. His wife, my, my, uh, his mother and I uh, didn't give it a second thought. He wasn't concerned about it um, because he is in perfect health. He's young. Uh, young people do perfectly fine with this. And you hear people all the time that the news, the news media, they sensationalize everything. Okay. Sure. And people don't follow this real closely, but if they did like I did for years and years, you would know that every year they sensationalize the flu. Okay, they'll find one kid somewhere who died because of the flu and right. they'll have him all over the news. It happens every single year. Okay, and things are, and it's, tra it's terrible, it's tragic, but anomalies like that happen all the time. Mm -hmm. Pe people fall over dead for no good reason all the time. You mm -hmm. know, babies die in their cribs for, for no explanation. Okay, mm -hmm. they, those things happen, but you don't see them on the news all the time. But when it comes to COVID, you're going to see that on the news. So it's, it, it definitely is something that we have to be cognizant of. Mm -hmm. But in my estimation, uh, we did overreact. 
and w there was there was never a need for a global lockdown. Um, but there was a need to take care of people in, in um, nursing homes. There was a need for grandparents uh, to be very cautious of not being around uh, family members all the mm -hmm. time. I have an aunt who turned 80 on Friday. God bless mm -hmm. her. And um, she's been, you know, isolated. And mm -hmm. I, I think that's fantastic. I, I, that's what she should be doing. Yeah. But people like you and I should be should not be so concerned. And we should be out there. Uh, mingling about and honestly um, you know I'm, I'm not a huge vaccine fan um, I think there's a time and place for everything in moderation and all that but uh, uh, this is a very tricky disease to come out with a vaccine I'm not convinced they'll ever have a vaccine for it it's, uh, it's mutating there's all kinds of things that are changing right now the, the the likelihood of a vaccine that actually works for this in my estimation is extraordinarily low mm -hmm. um, and and I, I'd, I'd be much more concerned with taking the vaccine than I would be getting getting the disease at this point. Mm -hmm. um, and the the latest that I've read, um, you know, originally they thought that we would reach herd immunity, which is when really the population begins to to um, defend itself against the virus. Yeah. Um, at about sixty percent um, infection rate. Uh, there was a couple studies that show that's closer to thirty thirty to forty percent. But then about two weeks ago, um, a group in Glasgow, Scotland, Scotland are saying that it could be as low as 20. Mm. And so right now, if you look at um, a, a lot of those uh, European countries got, that got hit early on, yeah. that just got hammered. If you look at their death charts, they just went through the roof, but then they went like this, and then they went down. Right. And they're, they're, they're like almost zero now. Mm -hmm. You compare that to New York, it looks exactly the same. If you look at, at New Jersey, exactly the same. Uh, Massachusetts, some of those states in the northern area of the United States, they look exactly the same as some of those in Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you were you were following Sweden, but Sweden took a little bit of a different approach. They didn't lock down, yeah. and they got hammered. Okay, mm -hmm. and their death rates went through the roof. But then, and now they're down. Now they're 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 almost non-existent. I believe that they may have reached that twenty percent mark, and herd immunity has kicked in. Um, and I'm hopeful that that is the case. And mm -hmm. right now in the United States, you're seeing um, uh, rise, you know, rises in death in Florida, Arizona, yeah. Texas, a few places. Um, and I believe what is going to happen is you'll see, you'll see the same pattern. They'll go up and they'll flatten and then they'll go down to, to, to almost nothing. Mm -hmm. And I'm hopeful that will happen. And if that's the case, we're highly likely not to see that second wave that a lot of people are talking about. So yeah. I'm a kind of a half, in, a half full kind of guy anyway. So yeah. I'm, I'm more optimistic, yeah. but that's where, that's the way I see it. And um, based on the data, that, that, that's, that's how it speaks to me. Yeah. I love everything you said um, and how you said it, um, because it was based on data analytics and research. Uh, with a bit of opinion included in that. And so for anybody watching, listening, it, you know, this is an opportunity for you to make a decision for yourself. Every day is an opportunity. You know, nobody's trying to convince anyone of anything. One of the things that I always like to do, though, because I am a glass half full, if not all the way full sort of person as well, is I believe that education can help us to make decisions that we can be... Um, we can be proud of, we can be confident about, uh, we can reduce the fear and we can move forward. I'm all for people thriving and moving forward. And I, I feel like this particular scenario has stumped people so much so, as you all know, people are, have depression, they're suicidal, you know, all these different things are happening. P businesses feel, feeling like they can't do anything in their business, people are no longer um, inspired and motivated, you know, all these different things. And so I believe that sometimes just hearing some good news, you know, hearing some, some positive information, not sometimes, all the time, you got to turn off some of that negative stuff and get some of the good stuff. So whether you yep. choose to believe it or not, you know, whether you want to wear your mask or not, you know, whatever people choose to do, of course, there are mandates here in North Carolina that we have to follow, but being educated helps us to make wise choices and decisions for ourselves Absolutely. and our families. And so yep. that's what I, you know, that's what I'm all about. Um, which is why I wanted July to be health is wealth month because what better, a lot of times in the summer we begin to really focus on our health. 
you know, we, we get through Christmas, we then, you know, Thanksgiving, gain some weight, beginning of the year as well. And then about February, we began to, well, January, we're like, I'm going to lose some weight. I'm going to lose that weight. And then by February, Always. For, <laughs> for, you yeah. know, and then so about March, April, somewhere in there, we begin to say, okay, I'm going to start working out. But we really do it around June, July. And so I'm hearing a lot of people really focus on it. You know, they've gained weight during this quarantine, all these different things, um, you know, lifestyle, um, patterns have shifted i've seen people that had six packs now have guts you know it's <laughs> yeah the covid 15 the covid 15 and, and like my co-host <laughs> likes to say the co uh the covid 19 19 pounds 19 that, pounds yeah <laughs> yeah that people have attached to them to their you know uh frame and so uh just want to give a bit of information as to how they can you know move forward and make better choices maybe reduce some of the fear um, be proactive about your health and your lifestyle so that you can not be so, uh, first of all, one of the things you said, it's going to help you sleep. One of the things that the, a blueprint for your life helps you to have better sleep, helps you to have better, uh, less anxiety. Some of those things happen for some of the people that I, you know, uh, was able to work with, but I'm sure there's a, a link there if you sleep better you do have less anxiety too yeah but then yep. you know also be able to get off some of the medicines that also cause some of the side effects such as uh restlessness and anxiety so um it's a win-win why not why not just say yes you know yep. <laughs> so Absolutely. definitely wanted to have you today because i want to share the fast blast with people um obviously I loved Akia. I love you. I love the, the blueprint that you continue to live. It's not just a fad. It wasn't just, let's come out with this product and move on to the next thing. It's been a consistent lifestyle. Um, and so yep. if you could just share once again, where to find information on the fast glass. And if anybody's interested, you can go and follow that and see if that's something that you want for yourself. I still love the essentials. Um, yep. I got to get me some more as <laughs> for my mom. I got to get some. Um, it's just, uh, I keep forgetting, but I'm going to do it. <laughs> so if you could share that information, that would be great. Yeah, just, you know, you can find us at fastblast.com, F-A-S-T-B-L-A-S-T.com. And, um, you know, if anyone wants to order, just uh, shoot us an email at uh, support at fastblast.com and ask for a coupon. And our okay. customer service manager, Talia, she will be happy to uh, take care of that for you. Okay. And um, certainly, Kim, Kimberly, we can take good care of you. Just uh, just shoot me an email or shoot Tali an email, and uh, we'll take care of that. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, it, it's the Daily Essentials is very similar to the original Kia product. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's over 30 uh, fruits and vegetables. There's over 10 greens and uh, 10 fermented fruits and vegetables in there. And uh, it's all organic, QSDA uh, certified organic. It's a great product. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I'll just I'll just tell you, uh, you know, with that COVID-19 that people have put on, um, I, uh, I, you know, I'm a big believer in intermittent fasting. And I think if you just uh, just extend, there's two types of, uh, of intermittent fasting. There's time restricted eating and then there's periodic fasting. So with the time restricted portion, I would restrict your window of time when you're eating each day. Try to restrict it to eight hours, but at least to 10 hours. If you want to take that first step, just do 10 hours because 10 hours is pretty easy. You know, if you get up at, uh, start eating at eight o'clock in the morning, that means you stop eating at six. That's not that, that, that drastic, you know, but if you'll do that, it's a good, healthy practice, no matter what. And then for two days a week, do the periodic fasting where you lower your calories to about 25% of normal. You know, and we, we have products that do that, but you can certainly do it without products. You can make your own smoothies or you, can, you don't have to have smoothies. You can, you can eat food or whatever, but eat about four or 500 calories a day for those two days. And what that allows your body to do is it just li allows it much. More. See, the most, the, the most taxing the thing the body does is digestion, yeah. digesting. That, that, that takes a lot of work. And I just ate at my aunt's house. I want to go get on the couch and go to sleep, right? That's <laughs> uh, so what you want to do on Thanksgiving. You, take, you eat that big meal, you want to go take a nap. It's because yes. your body is taking all that energy and it's digesting that food. And so what you're doing with intermittent fasting is you're get, giving your body time to rest and recuperate. And, get, and it, it does all sorts of uh, restorative work during that process. And it, yeah. it leads to a whole variety of health benefits. So that's, I think that's the biggest tip I could give anyone um, you know, with the whole COVID thing right now and, and to help lose that weight. If you could just 
put that into practice, um, and I, it, I think it'll be a you know big uh, it'll be a game change for it, for most people. Yeah, I second, and and honestly, I've seen through social media more people beginning to talk about intermittent fasting. Um, some of the people that I've talked to about it have said that that's the only thing that actually works for them to maintain their you know their weight as well as a, a healthy energetic lifestyle. And so mm-hmm. I absolutely co-sign on intermittent fasting. It has been my lifestyle for years now. And um, so I'm glad to have kind of the king. Oh, that's your last name too. One of the kings, <laughs> I'm going to call him that, of intermittent fasting, but how to do it well in a healthy way. Uh, one of the things that people have to understand is when you are in that uh, eating window, you still need to eat things that are going to feed and fuel your body, you know, and so that's something to consider what you're eating Mm -hmm. in that window as well. And so it's all about back to that blueprint for Mm -hmm. life. We had Alvin on Alvin miles uh, a couple of weeks ago where that's a sort of, he talks with people about their customized blueprint um, when it comes to like working out and just different things like that, not just working out, but lifestyle. And so that is something that anybody in wellness understands. We got to have a guide. We got to have a blueprint to success. Um, I haven't seen Alvin in a while. I love that guy. Tell him I said hello. I I will. You got to go over. I'm a big fan. Yes. You have to go over to Carrie to the Halo Salt Lounge that he just opened. I'll give you. Oh, absolutely. uh, That's perfect. Sounds great. The information. um, So you can. Very cool. Yes. So thank you, William, so much for joining me today. I hope you all enjoyed them and love them as much as I do. Just a wealth of knowledge. Um, So I would love to have you back at some point because I am a consistent fan. (laughs) Well, I'm a big Kimberly Wilmore fan, so anytime, you just let me know. I'm happy to I will. I will. Always good to be with you. Yes. So thank you all for joining Coffee and Collaborations today. Follow us at coffeeandcollaborations.com or on Facebook and Instagram at Coffee and Collaborations. You can even go over to Twitter and check us out at Coffee in Collab. Guys, have a blessed week. And remember, the coffee is optional, but the collaboration, that is essential to your win. Take care. This has been a Coffee and Collaborations media production. Follow us at coffeeandcollaborations.com, on Twitter at Coffee in the letter N collab, on Instagram at Coffee and Collaborations, and on Facebook at Coffee and Collaborations. See you in the next episode.